Thanks for joining me again for another week on Pause to Consider. I'm Sam Taylor, here to bring you another biblically-based devotion to get you thinking about the Word of God. By the time this episode gets published online, it will be the first day of spring here in the Northern Hemisphere, or the first day of fall if you happen to be listening south of the equator. Soon the snow will melt, the birds will sing, and the flowers will sprout from the ground once again. And I think it's the flowers coming back to life that brings me the most joy when spring comes around. I have fond memories of my childhood when my parents would let me help with the gardening. And I wanted to recreate that experience for myself once I set out on my own. I remember going to a nearby store and getting a packet of seeds of zucchini thinking, it can't be that complicated. If you've ever grown zucchini, you know what I mean. They're tremendously resilient and prolific growers. They must be fairly easy to grow, right? Well, I got to looking at the instructions on the packet, and it turns out there's a little bit involved in getting them to grow. Take a listen to the instructions for a packet of zucchini seeds. Sow seeds directly in the garden in fertile, warm soil in full sun, after danger of frost has passed. Be sure to choose an area when you did not plant squash or related crops within two years. Sow one to two seeds about 36 inches apart, cover with one inch of fine soil. Firm lightly and keep evenly moist. Seedlings emerge in 10 to 14 days. Thin to one plant when seedlings have two sets of leaves. Sounds like I took growing zucchini for granted as a kid, right? Reading that packet, it got me thinking about the parable of the sower from Matthew 13. You're probably familiar with the story from Sunday school, but... If you aren't, I'll briefly summarize. A sower goes about sowing seeds, and they end up going on all different types of ground. Some on the road, some in rocky ground, others end up in the thorns, and finally, some end up in good soil. As a kid, I never thought twice about how inefficient a sower was. But everyone that listened to Jesus when he told that parable that first time They must have thought to themselves, this is the worst farmer in the world. He's wasting 75% of his seeds on ground where they'd never have a chance to grow. And you know what? That makes sense if you're a farmer. If the sower wanted a successful yield for his crops, we'd like to think he'd get out his little seed packet and follow the directions. Except... The seeds aren't actually seeds, as Jesus told his disciples later on. They're the gospel, the word of God. The sower is anyone preaching the word of God, like you or me. And all the different types of ground are meant to represent the receptiveness of a person's heart that hears God's word. But the key difference between a sower and someone preaching the truth is that the sowers and the farmers know the kind of ground they need for crops to grow. You and I, we can't see the condition of a person's heart. We can't see whether they're going to be receptive towards hearing the Bible or not. But how often do we try treating the seeds of the truth like zucchini seeds? How often do we think we only have so many seeds to sow and we need to be conservative and wait for the exact right soil, the exact right conditions, so that we have a high success rate. And how often do we think to ourselves when we're talking to a classmate or a colleague or an acquaintance, you know what? I bet they'd make a great Christadelphian. Or worse yet, do we think, I don't think they'd want to hear about my views on the Bible. If you're anything like me, those thoughts might be more common than we care to admit. And that's what happens when we apply worldly wisdom to spiritual matters. We might spend all our time waiting for the right person to come along before we preach instead of joyfully sharing the seeds of the truth with everyone, like we should. In Ecclesiastes 11, verses 4 through 6, King Solomon wrote this relevant bit of wisdom. Take a listen. He who observes the wind will not sow, and he who regards the clouds will not reap. 
as you do not know the way the spirit comes to the bones in the womb of a woman with child, so you do not know the work of God who makes everything. In the morning sow your seed, and at evening withhold not your hand, for you do not know which will prosper, this or that, or whether both alike will be good. If you spend your life waiting for the perfect opportunity to preach the truth, it'll never come. If you expend all your efforts preaching only towards the people that you think will be receptive, you might find yourself with an even worse success rate than the sower from the parable. And sure, you're probably going to feel a little bit worse when you're faced with a greater volume of failures, or seeming failures rather. But the beauty about those apparent failures, those apparent failed preaching efforts, is God can work with the hearts of men and women everywhere. You may plant the seed today. Their hearts might be thorny today. But God can till and cultivate those hearts into fertile land where the fruit of the Spirit can grow in abundance. So what I want to do this week is I want to present you with an optional challenge. Something to challenge your own preconceived notions. Talk to one person you know in your life who you think isn't going to be receptive towards the truth. And you don't need to do anything big. I'm not asking for you to do a big preaching campaign, but bring up an ecclesial activity in passing. Offer insight based on biblical wisdom. Try it just once. Just once is all I'm asking. See if you can open up your comfort zone to preach towards people who you didn't think would want to hear it. And whether you do that this week or not, it's up to you. Just remember this. The truth isn't like zucchini seeds. When we appear before Christ to give account of our lives, he's going to be interested in the fruit we bore, not in the seeds we had left over. To wrap up today's thoughts, let's reflect on these words from Galatians 6 verse 9. And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap, if we do not give up. Your time is valuable, so I want to thank you for spending it with me today on Pause to Consider. If you like this week's devotion, share it with your friends in your ecclesia. You can also join the discussion on the Facebook and Instagram pages found in the podcast description. If you have comments or feedback, email me at pause to consider podcast at gmail.com. I truly hope this has been helpful for you on your walk. And I pray for God to be with you until we meet again, whether it be on next week's episode or in God's kingdom. God bless.